So hello, thank you for joining my channel today. Um, one of the first videos I did, I looked at some high altitude balloon footage produced by Dwayne Kellum. Uh, and this footage is rather beautiful and clearly shows the curvature of the Earth. But of course, flat earthers will say that it doesn't, even though it's really fucking obvious. Now, I wonder if there is some bias in the flat Earth community. My analysis was pretty crude. I just drew some lines on the screen and showed that the horizon is curved in the footage. I repeated this a few times for when the horizon was at different points in the image to show that it was not due to lens aberrations. Of course, I figured out I could try and make a more sophisticated and quantitative approach and see where that would take me. Now, as I like to play silly buggers, I ended up going down a rabbit hole figuring out how to do this. Now, what follows is an excessively detailed analysis, but I thought that I would upload it to demonstrate proper scientific rigor. So I will start with showing you a few of the screenshots I took from Dwayne Kellum's video. I won't show you all of them because there are many. Uh, there are a few issues with the images that will need to be addressed before getting started. Firstly, there are the insets showing the visible light images and the telemetry data. I could maybe try to get the raw footage without the insets, but there should be still plenty to work with uh, once these are removed. Now, these are the same stills with the insets removed. Secondly, there is the lens flare. The routines rely on a very crude edge detection algorithm based on brightness of pixels, and these will mess it up if they're too bright. Certain features on the ground can also make a mess of it, so these photos will be discarded. Uh, this still leaves me with 64 images. I can now do a bit of edge detection to locate the horizon. To do this, I slice the images by column and plot the brightness in each column as a function of row number. You can see that there's a region here where the brightness increases exponentially. Now, this is the atmosphere. I can take any threshold brightness value here as the edges, provided I use the same value every time. All pixels where the brightness is greater than this threshold value will end up with a value of 1, and pixels with a brightness smaller than the threshold value will end up with a value of 0. And this is what the pictures then look like after this edge detection. Now going from the top, I then take the first row for each column where the value is equal to 1 as the point where the horizon is. This gives me the y-coordinates of the horizon now the column number is the x coordinate. So now I can plot the horizon on the image. You'll notice that there are areas where the horizon is not detected. I will exclude these points from further analysis as these points will introduce excessive curvature. Now next we need to define a function for this line. There is a function that describes this line, but we can't use this yet. So we use the next best thing for linear systems, a higher order polynomial. Now here's the kicker. The results of this will actually tell us straight away if there is curvature. If you are fitting a polynomial to a straight line, then the coefficients for the second order and higher should be zero. Now if there is curvature, they are finite. But the point of this video is not so much demonstrating the curvature as, well, it is obvious, but more about sharing my silly, ostentatious analysis. So I won't spoil it and give you the results. But yes, there is curvature. Now, when we fit the polynomial to the horizon, we see the following images. The gray thick line is actually supposed to be lots of cross markers, but this shows the detected horizon. The red line shows the best fit curve. Now, I'd say that these are pretty decent fits. Now remember that I said that there's a better function to fit? Well, now we can. The perimeter of a circle is described by the following two expressions. But there was a problem. We don't know any of the parameters or the independent variable. But now we have the polynomial best fit. We can calculate the independent variable using geometry. This allows us to find the parameters using another regression. To calculate the independent variable, or theta, for each point, we can draw a line V1 between each point and then apply a rotation matrix through 90 degrees to get a perpendicular line. This line will be at an angle from the x-axis. Now, this angle is theta. So now we have our equations for a circle and we have the dependent variables and the independent variables. We can start fitting a circle to the images. 
and we get the following fits. Our best fit parameters now give us the radius of the circle and the xy coordinates of the center of the circle. Now it's only the radius that is of particular use to us from this point onwards. We can plot the values of the radius as determined from both our equations, and as you can see, they are a very close match. One line is actually perfectly hidden behind the other. Now this really does show that the equation of a circle is correct for this. Now there are a couple of funky results, but this can happen. Over all the images, we find that the average radius of the circle is just over 21,000 pixels with a standard deviation of just under 6,000. So that's pretty consistent with a standard error of 735 pictures or 3%. This will decrease with the number of images the analysis is run on. So yes, this clearly demonstrates that there is curvature. Now finally, we want to see about this lens aberration. Now lens aberration should increase the curvature as the horizon is farther away from the center. Fortunately, we can determine the location of the center of the horizon and therefore the distance from the center of the image. And we can plot the radius of curvature as a function of distance between the center of the horizon and the center of the image. Now I've excluded the three outliers from the plot just to make everything a bit more obvious, but the best fit line does actually account for them. Now the best fit line has a negative gradient. The curvature decreases slightly with distance from the center, but with an error of nearly 50%, I doubt that this is significant. And even if it were significant, this change is really small. More importantly, the intercept has a finite value. So there is curvature if the horizon passes through the center of the image, which tells us that there is curvature which is not caused by lens aberration. To conclude, I have demonstrated that the footage shows a curved horizon which is only possible on a spherical Earth. I have shown a really long and difficult way to demonstrate the blindingly obvious, but it was fun to figure out how to do it. Once again, that's it for me. I don't know what silly shit I'll be looking at in my next video, but please let me know if there's anything else ridiculously obvious you'd like me to put an excessive amount of effort into. Please like and subscribe.